so the First World War and the Union of uh, 1918 are two events which completely reshaped uh, the Kingdom of, the Roma of Romania at the beginning of the 20th century, bringing major political, economic, social, and cultural changes. The territory and population of the Romanian Kingdom doubled, doubled as a result of unification with the provinces of Bessarabia, Bukovina, and Transylvania, which before the war belonged to different empires. So after the war, Romanians found themselves in the process of defining their own identity within the newly formed Greater Romania. So in the years that followed, Romanian authorities aimed at maintaining the recently gained territories and defending them against Hungarian and Russian revisionism. They also wish to integrate the large number of ethnic minorities and finish the legislative, administrative, economic unification of the provinces. So in order to achieve all these, solidarity and um, unity were seen as key factors. And all this created a fertile ground for the flourishing of a nationalist discourse that emphasized Romanian singularity in history. And this discourse, of course, also impacted archaeological research and museum practices of the time. So in this paper, I will explore the role of archaeological research, museums, and collections in the construction of the Romanian nation and identity in interwar Romania from 1918 to 1939. Um, the years between the two world wars coincide with the professionalization, institutionalization, and internationalization of uh, Romanian archaeology. And they mostly overlap with the activity of Vasile Pervan, who is considered to be the founder of modern archaeology in Romania. Now, Vasile Pervan, um, he started out as a medievalist. Uh, but his professor soon traced him the mission to reinvigorate archaeology and the field of ancient history in Romania. And he studied a lot in Germany, and when he came back to Romania, uh, his career advanced extremely uh, rapidly. So he became a professor, a full professor, uh, at the University of Bucharest, only at the age of 27. And he also became the director of the National Museum of Antiquities. He also held several other important uh, positions. At that time, when Vasile Pervan was activating, everything needed to be organized in Romanian archaeology, and he proved to be the most suitable and competent person for this work. So he reorganized the ancient history and the epigraphy seminary at the University of Bucharest. He also reorganized the National Museum of Antiquities, which in 1956, after the Second World War, became the Vasile Pervan Institute of Archaeology, one of the main um, 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 institutions in today's Romania devoted to archaeological research. He also opened and um, um, contributed to the opening of uh, small local regional museums across Romania, which functioned as branches and sections of the National Museum of Antiquities. And he also initiated the massive campaign of systematic archaeological excavations in the country because he believed that the only way um, that uh, only archaeology could prove the thousand year long continuity of Romanians on the territory of Greater Romania. So um, he, all the excavated materials went to the National Museum of Antiquities and later on to the smaller uh, museum. And here they were organized, exhibited, and researched by Pervan's pupils and collaborators following his training, his ideas, and scientific agenda. And these excavations were one of the main ways of uh, enriching the collections of these museums in the interwar period. Um, these archaeological sites, which uh, were excavated by Vasile Pervan, were also the uh, training uh, grounds for his students. And he invested a lot of time in um, their education, as the preparation of a new generation of specialists was one of his main uh, concerns. And here you can see him with the members of the Romanian school in Rome, in Rome visiting Pompeii in 1926, and most of them were his uh, uh, pupils. So in this slide you can see um, uh, several um, important uh, archaeologists of the interwar period and um, the years that followed uh, the Second World War. I want to go into uh, details concerning their um, biographies, 
Uh, the main idea is that the leading Romanian archaeologists and historians in the interwar period and the years that followed the Second World War were Provence pu uh, pupils. Oh, sorry. Um, it seems that his vision was to create a strong and stable team of young professional archaeologists with whom he could work for legitimizing the greater, uh, greater Romania by proving the ancientness of Romanians. And his strategy was to train young people at the university on the field on excavations to send them abroad uh, to study, especially in Germany. And when they came back, he hired them at the National Museum of Antiquities, which most of the time was uh, the starting point of their careers. And some of them say that the National Museum of Antiquities, others then continued um, their careers um, in universities. And um, um, yes, and uh, wherever they went, they continued um, and um, uh, Provence agenda, and they implemented his vision not only in scientific matters, but also in general organizational and administrative uh, aspects. Uh, in his research, Purvan focused on bringing archaeological evidence to the antiquity and continuity of uh, Romanians on the territory of Greater Romania, as well as on establishing the significance of ancient history of the ancient history of Romania in southeastern Europe and world history. Uh, prehistoric archaeology was not among his main research interests, but through his work, he laid the foundation for its development. And he encouraged and supported his students and collaborators to pursue their interest in prehistoric archaeology, as this was still um, um, a field that was um, that uh, started to especially uh, develop in the interwar period. And it is in the inter interwar period that uh, prehistoric archaeology became a distinct subdiscipline within archaeology in uh, Romania. So. Um, um, the um, uh, sort of like um, exception of uh, prehistory as a subdiscipline was also the result of the work of um, um, uh, Vasile Purvan with one of his main collaborators, Ion Andriescu, who was actually the prehistorian in Vasile Purvan's team and one of his main successors, as he followed Vasile Purvan in leading the National Museum of um, Antiquities. And uh, Ion Andriescu was uh, delegated by Pervan several times to go to uh, different provinces of Romania and to uh, found smaller local museums and to research their archaeological collections. He also excavated uh, a large number of um, uh, prehistoric sites and he trained Pervan's pupils in prehistoric archaeology, excavation, and uh, in order to prepare them to then undertake their own um, excavations. So as mentioned before, the end of the First World War and the Union of 1918 came along with a significant enlargement of the territory of Romania. And this meant that archaeologists, Romanian archaeologists, had now access to the archaeological sites of the newly incorporated provinces. And uh, one of these provinces, Transylvania, was of, particular, was of particular interest for Romanian archaeologists and historians because uh, there, uh, this was the place where several sites considered to be crucial for Romanian history were uh, located. Uh, until 1918, um, uh, when uh, Transylvania belonged to uh, Austria-Hungary, Transylvania was dominated um, um, a research in Transylvania was dominated by Hungarian scholars. After the war, they were marginalized, and uh, many of them had to leave the country. And they were replaced by Romanian professionals in the academia, as well as in the scientific and cultural uh, institutions of this region. And the research agenda of these specialists was in accordance with uh, the objectives of the archaeological school of Vasile Purvan in Bucharest, where most of them received their education and training. Uh, so their research now in this uh, newly acquired province focused on ancient Dacia and the continuity of Latinized populations in Transylvania. Uh, excavations were, uh, therefore excavations were conducted mainly in sites uh, which were relevant for the history of Dacia or their Roman um, uh, period. 
And the archaeological excavations were carried out with funding from the Commission uh, for Historical Monuments. And what's interesting is that the, these funds were first allocated to the National Museum of Antiquities, which were headed by Vasile Kurvan, who then uh, distributed them, uh, distributed the funds among other um, uh, researchers and institutions, depending on the importance and needs of each site. So which was the uh, political context in, all, in which all these were happening. So in Austria-Hungary, before the First World War, Romanians living in Transylvania were considered to be inferior to the other three nations that inhabited the same province, which were the Hungarians, the Sekes, and the Saxons. Um, Romanians wished for emancipation and equal rights, and starting with the Enlightenment movement in the 18th century, Transylvania Romanians argued that they were the pure descendants of the Romans. So they forged themselves a glorious past and noble origins, which could offer them legitimacy in requesting rights. However, starting with the second half of the 19th century, Romanians began to discover their Dacian ancestry. So fruits started to become more important than noble origins. Hungarians, however, counter-argued Romanians with the theories of Austrian historian Robert, Robert Rössler, among others, which were extremely popular at the time. Rössler actually argued that Romanians formed as a people south of the Danube and migrated north of the river in the 13th century after the arrival of the Hungarian tribes in Transylvania in the 9th and 10th centuries. So he, Rössler's ideas conferred legitimacy to the Hungarian administration as well as to the process of um, Hungarization that took place in Transylvania. So these were the historical debates in Transylvanian, uh, that Transylvanian uh, Romanians and Hungarians brought along in the newly created uh, Greater Romania, and that needed to be answered also through uh, archaeology. So this is the reason why the Romanian archaeological and historical publications of the interwar period generally focus on emphasizing uh, the Romanian's Asian Dacian roots and their glorious Dacian uh, past. And uh, Dacians were seen by Vasile Purvan as um, a numerous and strong people, uh, the founders of a remarkable civilization and the only Thracian tribe which created a state. And for Purvan, the image of ancient Dacia was equivalent with the newly created Greater Romania. So his descriptions of Dacia are ideal projections of Greater Romania. He suggests that after the First World War and the Union of 1918, Romanians had the favorable context and all the necessary ingredients, such as ancient truths, magnificent past, and legitimacy, to repeat history and build a state that had the chances to become as prosperous, stable, and flourishing as its ancient version. So, but ancient Dacia and Greater Romania were the same not only for Vasile Kurvan, but also for his, uh, one of his main collaborators, Ion Andriescu, who, who was actually the, pre, the first prehistorian of his team. So for Andriescu, Dacia appeared to be an obvious continuation of several prehistoric civilizations that flourished on the territory of Romania during the Neolithic and Copper Age. And, um, as Dacia was the equivalent of Greater Romania, Romanians now automatically became not only the descendants of Dacians, but also of flourishing prehistoric civilizations. And Andrei Ceausescu believed that there were direct links between the prehistoric and contemporary peoples that inhabited the same land, but at different times in history. And um, this is how prehistory, and he believed that prehistoric archaeology had a major role in bringing arguments to this, to this and, and ethnicity was to be established with the help of typology, stratigraphy, and chronology. So now I got to the conclusion. Uh, so as I mentioned before, in interwar Romania, um, prehistoric archaeology aimed to bring evidence to the ancientness of Romanians, as well as to establish the significance of the country's prehistory in the context of world and southeastern European history. The agenda of prehistoric archaeology centered on discovering the ancientness of Romanian nation and researching the Dacian past, as well as on establishing the relevance of the states. Uh, I, sorry, I already said that. So all this was part of a larger movement, which meant to give a legitimacy to the existence of the newly created Greater Romania. And Vasile Purvan was one of the main intellectuals who engaged in this movement in the interwar period, and he contributed to this great plan through archaeology. 
In his aim to prove the ancientness of Romanians, uh, he created a strategy and he held key positions uh, as a director of the National Museum of Antiquities and professor at the University of Bucharest. And these allowed him to have an over overview of the archaeological heritage of the country and to uh, uh, control it. So, and he, the, um, uh, his other uh, main point, in, the other main point in his strategy was to educate and train um, and engage young and passionate professionals uh, in his dream. And then he sent them out to excavate, work in museums and teach in universities. And these are the people who continued his legacy. Uh, Pervan contributed to the creation of new museums, which enlarged their collection through the numerous archaeological excavations that he organized. And the excavated materials were then organized, researched, and published uh, in these museums by people who have been directly or indirectly formed by him. So, uh, as a general conclusion, we can say that the agendas behind collecting, researching, and exhibiting archaeological objects and collections uh, in Romania, between the two world wars, were generally following the agenda of Vasile Turvan, who was, of course, an actor uh, and part of a national movement in interwar Romania. Thank you very much. Thank you.